I was fearless, yet I was sticking to a plan a little bit more. Um, I would park at the base of the ridge and just take the ridge to the top and come right straight back down. Um, I'd walk up a creek and come right back down. You know, I was in an, and I guess it's a good way to cut your teeth. Yeah, it's a good way to start this kind of this sort of hiking. Yeah, because we call them they're they're called handrails. Uh, uh, basically, a ridge line is a handrail. Think about a handrail going up a pair of stairs. You hold on to that handrail, you're going to make it to the top of the stairs. Same thing. Um, if you stay on that top of that ridge line, you're going to get to the top. And if you follow it back down, you're going to get back down to where you were. Um, now, I I never really got myself into too many sticky situations. Um, I did did take a fall off about a 12 foot cliff um, when I was pulling myself up on a tree that would not hold my weight. Um, never got seriously hurt, you know, twisted ankles, um, pretty serious corneal abrasions, which Sam can. Yeah, I've I've, I've, I've heard. I've heard. <laughs> yeah, two weeks ago, that was funny. I can't talk eyes. Eyes weird me out. Yeah, oh, man. I won't, it's I won't get into details. Awful. It's one of the worst pains you'll have. I believe. I mean, it. you can break a leg and it wouldn't hurt as much, but. Yeah, I, I think I've been, you know, honestly, when I first started, I think I've been, got pretty lucky, kind of like you were saying with the, you know, with doing the 46 so quickly in the summer and yeah, you know, nothing happened. Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you don't, you know. Sure. So you, so pretty much your skill sets that you guys have developed to do this activity have, has come from being out there doing it and cautiously doing it from the start. Trial and error, kind yeah. of, you know, I've, I've come off the wrong side of the mountain before had to climb back up or I actually did a bushwhack in Vermont and um, thought I was on a different peak than I was. Um, came down the side of the peak I should have if I was on the right peak. Ended up five miles away from the car and hitchhiking at midnight because we it was the middle of winter and just didn't know where we were. We popped out, you know. it's It wasn't a life or death situation by any means, but it was very inconvenient. Um, you know, so it, you know, we're all prone to, you know, Accidents don't discriminate. <laughs> sure. So now what would you say are the big differences with bushwhacking from summer versus winter? Obviously, we know there's snow, but take me through the different kind of mindsets. Maybe ge some gear is different in, in the summer versus the winter or sticky situations that happen more in the summer. Obviously, you're not falling in a spruce trap in the summer. Yeah, well, sort of. I mean, there was a time in the summer where it wasn't a spruce trap, but it was, you know, leaves were covering the ground and... I went across, you know, what looked like solid ground, and it was not so solid at all. It was basically a network of roots, and I happened to step on the area that was kind of rotten out, and down I went. Oh, wow. And, you know, my armpits basically is what held me up, and my feet weren't touching anything. So Yikes. it's like, how, how deep is this hole? And you certainly don't want to fall in it, so you know, wiggled my way out. But yeah, even in the summer, I mean, you gotta, you gotta be careful. And obviously winter, winter's tough, you know, every single hike you're breaking trail, you know, and I was out maybe two weeks ago with 28 inch snowshoes on and I was still knee to waist deep, you know, just trying to work my way up because all the snow, no one's been there all winter. So none of that snow is packed down. And, uh, you know, with that, you need to be careful for sure. And then, you know, you get into these blowdown fields, which look like these, you know, flat, amazing, welcoming areas you want to walk across. But beneath them, there's there's new growth, there's blowdown, you know, spruce traps. There's some deep holes that you can fall in. Um, and then you need to be able to get out of them, you know. And, and like I said, oftentimes I'm, I'm by myself, so I, I carry webbing, you know, if I need to whip that out of a hole and hope it goes around a tree or sometimes I hike with a whippet which is a hiking pole that has it's like a mini ice axe on the end of it so enough where I could grab the end of that pole extend it out kind of hook that around a tree or whatever and pull myself out of these deeper holes um luckily I haven't fallen into too many that have been deep but you know I've talked to some older guys that you know that their stories from back when we had tons of snow in the past and one of my friends was on on tr mountain and he fell in a hole you know he's six feet tall and the hole was above his you know it was over his head um so yeah you need to be careful for sure and then obviously in winter you know you got snowshoes on 
the trees that are super, super thick, you know, in the summer, all those trees are now covered in ice and snow. Um, you know, so there's times where it's, it's like a wall. You literally cannot push through it. Um, or if you do it, it takes everything to get through it. You have snow bombs, which is basically just giant, you know, loads of snow coming off of the branches above you. It seemed like Spencer, every hike we go on, he, he'll just like brush a tree just the slightest little bit and the whole tree will just dump on him. <laughs> and, you know, it, it's Class. great if you're classic Spencer. Not lying. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you get wet really easy. I went out, you know, two days ago and, and we've had some warm weather recently and it was a beautiful day. You know, the sun was out 40 degrees. It was great. But every single tree was holding water and the snow was super, super sticky. So it was sticking to my snowshoes. So kind of imagine walking through a car wash with concrete blocks strapped to your feet. I mean, that's the best, best way to describe it. People are like, why, why do you do that? But it was still a great day. You know, I, I had plenty of extra clothes and, you know, I keep a good eye on the weather. You know, there, there's times where it's like, okay, I know it's going to be wet. So I'll carry extra layers just, you know, for safety reasons and just comfort reasons. You know, like I said, oftentimes I'll get to a summit and just put a dry shirt on and that dry shirt just, it's the best thing in the world. It's life changing in those yeah, moments. Yeah, it really is. And it's like, okay, like. I'm out of here. It's the and, worst thing about winters is temperature maintenance. Yeah, and right. It's, it's the worst. Layers on, layers off, and you know it's it's tough, and it's it's a lot of work. Um, really slow going, you know, especially breaking trail. I mean, you've broken trail in the winter. You understand, like it's it's tough, but it's very very rewarding. Like I like that challenge. Like I like going against you know tough conditions and. And pushing myself and, you know, you see so often now on Facebook people asking, oh, is this mountain broken out or is this mountain broken out? And I really think, you know, I would suggest that those people just get out there and try it, try breaking trail. You know, I mean, it's, it's tough. And like I said, it's, it's so rewarding when you get to that summit, you're like, yeah, I just did that. And, you know, it's, it's so worth it. And and going out is great because the trail, it's just, it's a trough that's all packed down and going home is easy. But yeah, for me, it's rewarding. Summertime, you got to be careful in the summer too, especially like the hot months. Um, a couple of years ago, I got myself in trouble, basically got severely dehydrated despite drinking a ton of water, you know, getting electrolytes back in me. But when you bushwhack, you know, even when it's warm, you got long sleeve shirts on pants on hat you know you you need to protect yourself or you're going to get completely shredded by these trees and the heat that day was just it was too much to me and I was in a really bad spot I was between two mountains and the only bailout point was going over the third mountain and it took me about six hours to go a mile and a half just to give you an idea of what the terrain was like and and I was being careful you know my heart rate was off I was cramping up which I never get cramps. It wasn't, you know, from being out of shape, it was, it was different. And, uh, you know, I'd go every little bit, sit down, take a break, go a little bit, lay down, take a break, just trying to stay cool. And when I got to the final summit, everything I had on was bone dry. You know, my shirt was white and it was just salt, you know, from dried out sweat. And that was scary. You know, it's like, okay, I'm not sweating anymore and it's still 80 degrees. Um, so took my time and, Got out of the woods, you know, I, again, going back to the planning, I knew exactly where I needed to go to get out of there safely. And the hike itself, I mean, all that went fine other than my body just, you know, slowly shutting down. And I got home and, and started just vomiting violently, which was super scary for me. Um, I had never experienced anything like that. So I ended up going to the ER and they put some fluids back in me and, you know, said I was in a pretty tough spot. So you know, every time I go out, whether it's summer, winter, whatever, I learn something new. And and that hike, as tough as it was and as scary as it was, I feel like I handled myself really well. You know, I had the gear if I needed to spend the night. Um, I was in communication with my parents, you know, through my GPS, so they knew where I was and, you know, what, what my state was. And, uh, 
yeah, I mean, it was good. And now I know avoid those hot days because my body just simply doesn't like it. Um, you had a bailout plan too. Yeah, I had a b- bailout. I mean, it was a it was a big it was a big hike. It really was. And you know, several friends as well as my parents, I, I printed out a map. And they knew exactly where I was. Several different bailout points. Um, to the point with that hike, I actually drove my mom to the bailout points just so she knew, like, you know, if something goes wrong, this is where I'll be. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, summer, obviously heat, you got to watch out for um, ticks, bugs, you know, you're, you're getting slapped in the face while you're getting chewed alive by bugs. So, I mean, it's... <laughs> and you're out in, you're out where people aren't. So there's lots of things in the woods that are out there that we can't discuss, but you're in, you're in no man's land. And there's things out there in the woods that are more, much bigger than ticks. Am I right, Sam? Well, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you never know. I mean, luckily I haven't had too many encounters. A lot of porcupines. Stuff's out in the woods, man. I, I know, I know what you think is out in the woods and. I mean, there's been some stuff, trust me, where it's like, I don't know what just caused that sound. and Moose whisper. Yeah, well, that too. Um, you are the moose whisper. Yeah, people keep... You really are, dude. <laughs> they keep calling me that. That's, um, that's a very accurate statement about you. I, I do see a lot of moose sign, a lot of scat, a lot of tracks, trees they've been, you know, eating. Um, Spencer and I went on a hike right in Wilmington. We saw three sets of tracks, and it looked like a cow and two calves. I mean, right on a popular trail, a couple hundred feet off the road. So, I mean, there's a lot of moose up here. And, uh, yeah, a couple of years ago, I was climbing up a drainage and had seen tracks and and fresh scat. By the way, quick little sub-subject here. Just because you're up high, don't think the water is healthy to drink because there could be a ton of moose scat in it. So good to know. Yeah. Filter your water. But dirty um, water is better than dehydration. That's true. Yeah. That's also good. <laughs> that's, that's definitely true. Carry a filter. Yeah, a um, week, of, week of the squirts is better than dehydration. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, yeah. Cruising up this drainage and, and I could smell this, you know, kind of funky smell. And it smelled like horse urine. And I had never smelled that before. And, and then the tracks and everything kind of disappeared. So I was like, man, I must have just missed that moose. And cruising along and not being quiet by any means and you know it's this this drainage so a little bit of water coming through a lot of rocks you know it looks like a stream and I put my hands both hands and and one of my feet on this rock and I heard this like grunting sound and I look up and there's just this giant moose head I mean right above me like several feet away and I mean I froze you know it's like face to face with a moose and uh so yeah, like once I realized what was going on, I slowly backed up, put this huge rock between us and he was behind that rock that I was starting to climb up. So like I felt safe. Um, you know, I was maybe 10 feet away, you know, at that point. And, uh, he was young. He was only like two or three years old and he just sat there eating leaves off of a tree, perfectly fine with me being there. Um, and then, yeah, after like 10 minutes, he went up the drainage a little bit and he laid down I and mean, he was just hanging out there for like five minutes and I was completely blown away. I mean, if, if I had known he was there, I certainly wouldn't have got that close just cause moose, I'm probably more scared of moose than any other animal out there. Cause I mean, they can kill you. Um, bulls when they're in rut, they've got one thing on their mind and it, safety's not sure it, um, and the cows, you know, if they have calves with them, they'll be very aggressive. Um, so, yeah, never never approach a moose. Um, that was just purely by accident. But such an amazing experience to be that close to an animal that large. And, and one I've always had an interest in. You know, it was probably a once-in-a-lifetime experience. It actually happened on Spencer's birthday. Remember I sent him a picture of the moose saying happy birthday. And I don't think he fully understood. He did that for you. What happened. And then like I posted the video and he's like, man, I'm so jealous. And like all the times and years he's been in the woods, he still hasn't had. I I mean, that was, that was a pretty rare thing, but, but just seeing tracks, you know, it's, it's cool to know that the moose are out there and, 
a little scary. There was one time I was I was bushwhacking 